Hello everyone and welcome to the last webinar before you guys depart. Aren't you guys excited? I mean, this is, we've been doing this, you know, for a couple months now, so I'm sure you guys are all sick and tired of this process. So this is actually one of the webinars we really enjoy doing because it's not so much document intensive and we really get to get you pumped for uh, your new life adventure. Okay, so as you can see, you can see me up here and down below it should be the, uh, PPT file that we're gonna run for you. We're gonna be recording this so you guys will be able to refer back to it at any time. So don't try to write everything down, just kinda of listen, pay attention, and make sure to, uh, if you do need to write something down, maybe it should be a question that you have because we're gonna have a Q&A session at the end of this webinar. So uh, if you guys have any questions, you can also, uh, oh, wrong finger, you can put it in that box, you can chat, type it into that box, type chat, chat type, I'm dyslexic. Uh, or you can hold on to it and we will uh, you can maybe chime in during the Q&A, okay? So we have some operators that are gonna be answering it in the chat box and for some really good questions, uh, me and Sarah, will, Sarah and I will be uh, answering it later, okay? So let's get started. This is the Corvia Spring 2015 Ultimate Arrival Guide uh, for all our non-epic candidates. Okay, so first, we just wanted to say congratulations. Um, you know, we were really thankful effort and the time you guys put into this we know it's a headache uh, believe us uh, we have to deal with lots of candidates and you know there's always something that is a hold up or some sort of problem so we thank you for persevering and we are really excited to get to meet you um, at the Corvia party and when you guys arrive okay so congratulations so what are we going to talk about today well, we're going to talk about a couple things first of all we're going to talk about culture shock uh, and how to combat it we're going to talk about packing we're going to talk about gifts, we're going to talk about what to do when you arrive at the airport, and we're also going to talk to you about the period after you arrive at the airport and what's going to happen and what to prepare for, okay? I should let you guys know it's a beautiful day in Seoul. It was snowing, almost blizzarding a couple days ago, but now all the snow's gone and it's really nice outside. Okay, so first we're gonna talk about culture shock, and this is gonna be your first major challenge in Korea. So what is it? Um, as you can see, we put up some little pictures of things you might not be used to. Uh, my <laughs> co-associate Sarah really did not want us to use that uh, picture of the ground toilet, the squatty, we call it a squatter. Um, but that that's realistic of Korea. Sometimes you'll encounter those kinds of toilets. Also, below you'll see, uh, you know, it's a little bit more crowded than you guys might have been used to, and this might freak you out, but, uh, you know, it's just something you got to get used to and also, you know, soju and little snacks and stuff like that. Okay, so we're going to talk about culture shock. First, what do you need to know about culture shock? Culture shock is the feeling of disorientation experienced by someone who's suddenly subjected to an unfamiliar culture, way of life, or set of attitudes. Imagine South Korea. You know, this country, this culture is thousands, thousands, maybe you know, thousands of years old, and it's been, you know, developing parallel to our own country from back home. So things are the same, you know, we're all using iPhones, we're all using Samsung phones, but culture-wise, it's almost completely different. Uh, so, you know, you're gonna have to get used to some things and they do things a different way. So first, you know, a lot of people don't know about is a lot of the items you're used to <laughs> growing up are gonna be unavailable. Um, one thing that really hit me hard was no ranch dressing. I don't understand, how can you eat like if you're a really tall person, you're a really big person, you know, Koreans aren't necessarily that tall or that big, so they don't have a lot of size options for bigger people available. Uh, I actually have the opposite problem. I'm pretty short, and uh, I have a, I wear like a size six and a half uh, shoe, and I, I can't find that shoe size anywhere. So, uh, you know, be prepared for things kind of like that. Also, there's a difference in customs and views. Uh, alcohol, you know, uh, I've noticed since living here, I grew up in California myself, um, I've noticed that being here that Back home, alcohol was kind of considered, oh yeah, if you're crazy, you know, a little bit crazy or you really want to celebrate something, um, you know, you do alcohol and stuff like that. And, you know, I grew up from a pretty conservative town. Open up, you know, the town wasn't really happy about that. Um, in Korea, alcohol is celebrated, you know, a lot different. Um, they're really open about alcohol. It's kind of just a, a very big way to socialize. Think about things in Germany or in England, the difference in perceived drinking culture, okay? Also, you know, things like pushing and line cutting, um, it's really crowded, you know, uh, if you're going to live in one of these big cities. So you got to kind of get used to, um, you know, personal space is different, okay? 
And one of the biggest things that's different here, I would say, is respect. Um, you know, you might think that respect is, oh, you know, saying hi to someone or, you know, just giving someone their personal space. But here it's a lot more than that. Uh, actually, the, the big principle is that, you know, elders really respect your elders and do what they say or abide by what they say. Um, so make sure you, you know, you're comfortable with that. If you're meeting an older person, uh, you actually, if you start learning Korean, you have to use a completely different language kind of to, to speak to them. Um, and you always bow and things like uh, getting on the bus. You know, if, if the bus is full, you're sitting down and an older person comes on, you're supposed to give up your seat for them. For some people that come, there's like, hell no, I'm not, you know, like, I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm, that's, that's not my culture. Like, I'm not used to that. But that's the thing. Remember, you're going to a new place, a new culture. So you want to try to respect theirs. Remember, you're a guest in the country, not the, you know, person that's coming to change the entire culture to be more like Canada or more like the UK, okay? So what's the, one of the biggest ways uh, to combat culture shock? And I would say, hands down, it's learn Korean. Um, actually, you know, they say that kind of the language dictates how the culture agree because once you see how the language works and you kind of get a taste of the language you'll see why things are a certain way in Korea okay so why should you learn Korean a or number one for survival um, you know <laughs> my boss always had this metaphor where he said you know a baby uh, doesn't learn to speak because it necessarily wants to it learns to speak because it has to in order to survive it has to let someone know it's hungry it has to let someone know to change its diaper okay I'm not saying you're gonna have to have your diaper changed but you know, it's, it's, think of it like that. For survival reasons, you need to learn the language. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to communicate with a lot of people here, okay? Also, why should you learn? So you can understand what's in front of you. Maybe you're really hungry and you're looking for a restaurant and you have no idea what this sign says because it doesn't have any pictures of food on the sign. You know, is this a real estate office or is this a restaurant? Things like that. Also, to show respect for the cultural, the culture and for, um, not remember, but think if, you know, you're walking around in your hometown and suddenly there's a foreigner. So let's just say they were from, who, what country should we pick on today, Sarah? Japan. Uh, okay, so say a Japanese person came uh, to your home, your home country or your home city and you're trying to, they're trying to talk to you and you said, oh, can you speak English? And let's just say magically they, they could a little bit, they're like, oh, no, not well, I, I, I don't like English wouldn't you like you know it's you're coming to the country to really make an effort to try to learn the language because you'll get a lot better results when talking to people first of all you'll be able to talk to people second you'll get a lot better results and third it's just showing respect that you are indeed making an effort okay also uh, number four so you're not forced to rely on others this is a really big thing uh, some people like to be independent and then there's some people that you know uh, if you can't uh, speak basic Korean, you know, it's really, you're going to have to ask for help on everything. For example, um, you know, I'm still guilty of this sometimes. I just hurt my back at the gym here. I really hurt my back and I needed to go to a physical therapy place and I was really freaked out because I'd never been to a physical therapy place. So I had to ask my coworker, I said, hey, can you please like come with me just to make sure there's not a translation issue? And I realized that then, man, if I had to learn Korean a little bit better, I wouldn't even have to burden someone with this okay so remember um, learning korean will allow you not to rely on others uh one other thing is if the very you know like i don't have time we only have a couple weeks left before we leave that's okay um i would say the very least you can do is learn the korean alphabet before coming it's really simple it's not like english where you have silent e's and you know sometimes it sounds like this and sometimes it sounds like that that letter and stuff like that the Korean alphabet, um, there's only, how many characters are there? Okay. <laughs> no one knows. I'm going to just go out on a whim and say that there's probably about 28 characters. And most people, honestly, you can learn 24. Brandon, oh my God, you are on fire. Brandon, um, thank you for that. Um, you can actually learn these in an afternoon. I did it in a couple days, but most people, they say you can learn it in one week. Some people learn it in an afternoon. It's really easy. It's completely phonetic. The way that character sounds, for the most part, is how it sounds anytime you use it, okay? And once you see it, you know, all right now it looks like just math. It looks like craziness, but it's really not that complicated, okay?
So learn Korean now, please, before coming, at least learn the Korean alphabet. Uh, I should say that since you guys are going to probably be traveling to Seoul at some point, a lot of times in Seoul, there's stuff written in, how should I say, it's English words, but it's written in Korean. So, for example, you might see a sign, like, what does this mean? McDonald. Oh, McDonald's. Or maybe it says something like, Sprite. Oh, Sprite. You know, the soda, okay? So, a lot of times in Korean culture, it's written, it's an English word written in Korean. So, if you learn uh, Korean characters, you'll be able to immediately know all those words, okay? If you need some great resources, we recommend these three things. First is Talk to Me in Korean. This is the king. Um, it's the largest online resource. Hyun Woo Sun, who heads it, he's a, uh, I've met him, he's a genius. He speaks like six different languages fluently. He's incredible. Another one is Go Billy Korean. He is, I believe, uh, he's an American college student who was studying Korean. And he, for people that just kind of like to see examples written out and exactly what they mean in English, he's a, a really good resource for that. Sweet and Tasty is a Korean-American girl from Los Angeles, and she is kind of more about entertaining and stuff like that, but she had a really great, um, some great videos on explanations of Korean words and the alphabet. Okay, so I'm packing. Um, I know for a lot of the boys here, you guys aren't going to do that till like the night before, but uh, we're going to tell you <laughs> everything you need to know about packing, things we recommend, and uh, mistakes people often make. So let's get into packing as I take a sip of water. Mm. Before we get into this, I highly recommend going to your local superstore or supermarket and looking for this. It's called a space bag and it's a really thick plastic bag that you cram stuff into and then you take a vacuum, vacuum cleaner hose, hook it up and it sucks all the air out and it all those porous things like blankets, t-shirts, jeans, it sucks all the air out and it compresses it really, really nicely. So it allows you to fit a lot more in your suitcase. So that that point, you only have to worry about weight, okay? So they're not that expensive. Don't worry, they're not gonna run you uh, into the into debt. Um, they're probably about $12, uh, six pounds, something like that, okay? You can find them at most superstores and supermarkets and it really works great for doing things like blankets, okay? And towels. So here are general recommendations that we at Corvia would like to recommend. Um, first, deodorant. Uh, <laughs> you can find deodorant here. Um, it's not going to be any brand you've heard of, and it's going to be about three times the price. So we recommend going to a superstore and getting a, a lot, you know, like five sticks or something like that. However many is going to last you about a year. Remember, um, any anytime, your parents can send you stuff. Uh, but if you ever run out, you know, and you don't want to bring that much initially, um, just ask them to bring some of these things, okay? So first is deodorant. Make sure to bring that because, uh, fun fact, Koreans, they do sweat, but their sweat does not smell. It's uh, non-smelly. I don't, uh, the non-sensual? No, that's not the right word. Anyways, I, I'm forgetting English as I, as I live here. Anyways, uh, deodorant. Next is a full sheet set. Um, if you can buy a new sheet set at one of these superstores like Target or Walmart or any other kind of store like that. Um, um, usually most beds here are going to be in between a twin and a full, so it's better to get a full. Make sure things comes with things like uh, pillowcases, a sheet, and a fitted sheet. Um, and you might ask, why isn't this gonna be provided? Um, yes, it probably will be provided, but if you are taking the floor, do you really wanna sleep on sheets and linens that you don't know how often they wash that? So uh, yeah, I would recommend bringing a new one or one from home, okay? Also, personal hygiene products, uh, anything that you need or you like to use every day, um, bring a stock of those because they might have something similar in Korea, but it's not going to be the exact same version. So if it really is going to make you a lot more comfortable, like I said, a lot of this is how to combat culture shock. So uh, bring stuff that you're familiar with. It'll really help settling down and be a lot easier. Also, cold medicine, uh, Advil or Tylenol. Yes, they do have some of those things, but about 50% the strength of the medicine that you're used to. Um, funny story, um, I brought uh, Advil for one of my coworkers. Her mom wanted it, and uh, she took the uh, Advil, and she said she started feeling sick, and she said, oh, your your American medicine is it's too strong. And I said, well, what, what do you mean? She's like, Okay, so if 
you know, think about taking a Tylenol. That's not strong to us, but that's because we've been taking it since we were, you know, children. So um, definitely bring some of those things that for when you get a cold or when you have uh, muscle pain or something like that, okay? Electrical plug adapters, we're going to talk more on this the slide after I believe. Make an introduction PowerPoint. Make sure to make this before you leave and not after you arrive. Um, this is going to be for your first week at school. Um, since you're going to be new at the school, the kids are going to want to know more about you. So make a PPT introducing, you know, how many brothers and sisters do you have? A, a picture of your family. You know, all of this is new to them. Um, and if you really want to go above and beyond, uh, you know, yeah, do some things like your hobbies or what you want to be or what your job was. I remember um, I put, <laughs> I kind of over exaggerate stuff. I said, oh, in America or uh, in the U.S., I like to eat pizza. And I showed this huge, unrealistic picture of like a five foot pizza. And they're just like, wow, you know, so it's, it's to have fun. Make sure it's very visual, okay? So to review, deodorant, sheet set. Personal hygiene products that you use daily, cold medicine, electrical plug adapters, and the introduction of plug adapters. Uh, this is what you call an AC adapter. Bet you're plugged in right now. Look at what's plugged into it, and you'll see kind of this little black box. So that's actually a wattage converter. And as you can see, the female and male plug, uh, they can plug into each other. So that way you can actually swap those out for different kinds of plugs uh, when you arrive in a new figure eight design is the same in every country but the plug that actually plugs into your wall is uh, different in every country so korea uh, korea's plugs look like the ones on the very left hand side is you can buy that little cable the little figure eight uh cable those are really cheap they're like five dollars or something like that what about five thousand one or five dollars that's if you have the ac adapter okay if you have something that automatically transforms the wattage and you just need a little plug adapter because it doesn't have the figure eight thing. You can get this plug adapter and those are really cheap. Those are like a thousand won or about a buck each, maybe even 50 cents depending on where you go. And the third option is the wattage converter. This is the most expensive option. This is the most unreliable option and this is uh, <laughs> something that can be completely avoided if you plan for it, okay? So if you have an electronic toothbrush or something small like an electronic shaving kit that's really small, most likely those are not gonna have a huge AC adapter because the AC adapter would be way bigger than the product itself and you know, for the companies, desirable by most of the consumer public, okay? So a wattage converter, what it does is it takes something that's only built for a certain wattage, wattage like 110 volts or whatever it is, and it converts it to being usable, uh, it converts the power being drawn into being usable for that device. I have a little shaving kit, I use this uh, to charge it, but that's the only thing I've ever needed for. Everything else can pretty much be done using a plug adapter or an AC adapter cord, okay? So your homework is after this uh, webinar, go into your bathroom, look at your electronic toothbrush or whatever you might have and see, does it say it's 110 and 220 compatible? If it does, then you can get away with a plug adapter. If it's not, then you have to use a wattage converter, okay? And for big electronics like your, uh, your laptop, an AC adapter cord might be the best. All right, so now let's talk about clothes, what you should wear in the classroom. If you had to take a look at the two photos on the left, which one would you guess would be the most appropriate for being in the classroom? Mm. Yeah, it's the one on the left, by far, I know. If you're from you know, the West Coast, or you're from Hawaii, or something like that, or from the Caribbean. Actually, wait, people from the Caribbean? Oh, never mind, we'll get into that. Um, you know, that might be something you wear in public, but actually in Korea, that would be to wear, okay? So what should you wear in the classroom? First, for women, um, definitely go with more of skirts and blouses. That's going to be, that's kind of what most teachers wear in South Korea. Granted, if you're going to be teaching in the wintertime, you know, you might get some leggings and things like that, okay? Um, but yeah, generally, just imagine, for any of this clothes, it's not too difficult. So just imagine, what would, you know, if you're teaching elementary school, what would an elementary school teacher back home wear, okay? And then wear that. For men, um, I always say kind of look like a, you know, like a college professor or a lecturer and something like that. 
or a full-on suit or tuxedo or something like that, okay? So, you know, sweaters, um, also blazers, you can wear those as well. Uh, ties are optional, um, but if you really want to go for a tie, you can definitely do uh, For women, um, we got to tell you, cleavage is a big no-no. Um, that's kind of that respecting the culture thing. It's cleavage is still very, very not accepted here, okay? So also cover shoulders, shoulders, uh, exposed shoulders are kind of is away from things like that. Um, jeans aren't preferred, um, but they are tolerated. So make sure you ask your co-teacher if wearing jeans is okay. Um, don't wear shorts. Shorts aren't really okay ever in a classroom, but um, you can girls, you have a great option. You can replace those with skirts. And you're gonna be required to use indoor slippers, which we'll talk about after this. Men, no shorts ever. Um, yeah. I. You know, it's, it gets really hot in the summertime, and I remember I wore shorts one time, and the principal, principal came, and he's like, please don't don't wear shorts. And I said, ah, okay. And, you know, I uh, never wore shorts again. So just remember, it's different culture, different things are okay. Uh, darker jeans are okay, but don't go with things like, uh, like holes, like lots of holes in it, or ripped, torn. I know that's kind of stylish a couple of years ago, but uh, try to stay away from that. Also, uh, darker jeans, you know, I just said that. Uh, dress shirts are going to be your friend. So if you don't have any dress shirts, go to H&M right now and buy some. You can get some for like $10 or something like that. Also, uh, ties are not required, but you can do it. And it always is, uh, shows a little bit more professionalism. And you're also going to be required to wear indoor slippers. So what are indoor slippers? They look like this on the right-hand side, the little zebra pattern right there. Um, don't worry about finding these before you come. You can find them at pretty much any store in South Korea once you arrive, okay? And they're not that expensive. Maybe they'll be $10, $8, like that, okay? And what happens is uh, whenever you come to school, there'll be like a little cubby for you. And you can take your shoes and you put them in that cubby and then you put on uh, these indoor slippers when you get into school. The reason for that is because Koreans don't really use carpet or anything like that. They use uh, floors. So dirt being tracked in is really, really visible uh, and so they like their children they require the teachers and children to wear these indoor slippers so it keeps the place a little bit more clean okay so now my personal recommendation don't let anyone at Corvia know this but this is what I personally recommend and we get questions this is not the opinion of Corvia as a whole this is just my personal things because I did exactly what you're doing I was a Gepic teacher uh, came here in 2012 and I was like, oh god, like I was searching. I'm sure you guys have watched like Say Kimchi or Say Kimchi, Eat Your Kimchi's video and you guys have already been Googling about this. But uh, my personal recommendations from what I've learned is number one, bring a Brita with extra filters. You'll thank me later because not even Koreans drink their own water straight from the tap. It is safe enough, they say, but a lot of Koreans will use some sort of filtration system either built into the refrigerator or things like that. So I recommend bringing a breeder with the extra filters. Now you might say, Stephen, that's crazy. That's a huge amount of space that I'm going to lose. No, 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 get, get creative with it. You know, that whole empty space inside the container, fill it with your socks, fill it with anything else you want to protect and stuff like that. And then put the top on and put it in your suitcase, okay? It's actually very, very easily fittable in your suitcase if you put stuff inside it, okay? You're not gonna lose that much space. Also bring your favorite seasonings if you like to cook sauces and dressings, uh, towels. Personally, I would say bring a towel or two that you're comfortable with from back home because Korean towels are very small. I would say their uh, full body towels are about the size of a hand towel. So, you know, if that's not going to do, make sure to bring a towel or two. Uh, the hygienic starter pack. Um, my rule of thumb of this is you, of course, you're going to be able to find things like toothpaste here and shampoo, but you don't know exactly when you're going to be able to get out to the store to get that. It might not be the first day. It might not be the second day. It might be the third day, okay? So I recommend if, you know, I every day I use body wash. So I brought a full container, full size, not a travel size, full size of body wash. I brought a thing of toothpaste. I brought a thing of, uh, what else did I did? Some, you know, face cream or whatever, whatever that was, a facial cleanser, I'm sorry. Um, I brought a full-size portion of that just to have it for the first month. So I could be, you know, if you get here and you don't have any of that and you're like, oh God, what do I do? It's just, you're going to get more of a mess and you're going to be more, you know, nervous and things like that. So bring something so that when you come to Korea, you can automatically start each day like you're used to already doing. Okay. Trust me, the apartment is going to already going to be a big enough change for you yet. So you don't want to have to change into, you know, using a bar of soap if you've never used a bar of soap before. Also, a meat thermometer if you're not good at cooking like myself. 
Um, remember that they don't use ovens early in Korea. Everything's done on the stove. So if you don't know how to cook chicken, remember, if you don't cook chicken properly, you can kill yourself. So make sure to get a meat thermometer to uh, uh, get used to cooking meat fully, fully done. And the last one is gifts. And we used to, we used to talk about this for like 20 minutes. It, it's not that complicated. You kind of, to, and we don't want this to stress you out. Um, first, gifts, the whole thing about gifts is you're not bringing them a sacred object that's been passed down in your family for hundreds of years. A gift is something very small. It's just to show your appreciation. Let me tell you a story. Um, when I started working at Corbia, you know, my boss would take me uh, to meetings with him. And when we go to a different con country, is that country? Company to have a meeting, we'd always run by the supermarket really quick and get like a, a box of juice or some energy drinks and we would give it to the people when we arrived uh, that we're having the meeting with. That's just kind of what Korean culture is. It's like when you ever go to someone's house for the first time or you're going to meet someone, it's kind of you, it's always good to just show a little bit of a gift. That's the culture difference, okay? So it doesn't need to be something big and actually we very much would like to dissuade you. Dissuade? Not persuade you, not recommend bringing something big, bring something small, okay? So things like this, or chocolates, ornaments, a unique snack. You know, if you're from Canada, bring some, a little thing of maple syrup, you know, that's a stereotype, but it's also something, you know, that kind of allows them to get a taste of your culture, no pun intended. Uh, Keychain, um, stationery, some soaps. Um, I think, we you know, when I went to the United States, uh, one of my coworkers, we went together and she brought back uh, for the office, she brought back little hand sanitizers because uh, they don't really have scented hand sanitizers here. Health items, vitamins, um, things like that. And yeah, also yeah, unique food item from your country. So um, when I first came, I always recommend, um, let me see real quick if I have it. Yes, I do. Okay, so the next thing is who you're going to uh, present it to. Um, make sure to bring gifts for at least these three people. First is going to be the principal, second is going to be the vice principal, and the third are going to be the co-teacher or co-teachers. Okay, so for co-teachers, this is what I was going to get into earlier. You might, want, you might think, how many co-teachers am I going to have? Um, how do I know if it's a man or a woman? Very good question. So bring something that's non-gender specific. Um, when I first came, Sorry, ooh, I'm, uh, I brought C's candy. C's a bit better chocolates than just a Hershey's bar because they have Hershey's here. Um, so I brought a little thing of chocolates and you know, that's unique because you can only find C's chocolate in a couple of places in the world. You know, they really appreciate it and because I had multiple co-teachers, they were able to share it, okay? But most likely you're gonna only gonna have one principal and one vice principal, okay? Um, when should you give it? Um, give it upon the first meeting. Um, there's this rumor, and actually this got dispelled at the last webinar we did for Ep You know, I heard this rumor, and you can find on the web, where people will say, yeah, you should only buy, give a gift to your coworkers after the first month when you get your first paycheck, and that's tradition. That is a huge lie. That is not in a company or a school. Not even Koreans have heard of that. Where that came from, it turns out, is... Um, it was, I guess, showed in one Korean drama, but also Sarah was telling me, Sarah's to my left, by the way. Uh, <laughs> that's why I keep looking over here. Sarah said that that's actually a tradition for the children, and you give it to your parents. You give your parents your first paycheck, or is it, yeah, the first job they have, the first paycheck, they give their entire first paycheck to their parents. That's where that came from. That is not the same for companies, schools, and things like that. Okay, so when should you give it? Give it upon the first meeting. Remember, it's all working on the first impression factor. You want uh, people to think you're a nice person, so give it the first time you meet them, okay? Um, and also, gifts should abide by hierarchy in perceived value. Um, just generally, the principal's gift should be perceived in higher value than the vice principal's gift, than the co-teacher's gift, okay? You might be meeting your principal and vice principal at the same time, so uh, that's why, okay? Okay, moving out of packing and finally on to arrival, what to do at the airport. Mm. By the way, I think it's ranked in the top the number one airport for five years or six years in a row. It's a really amazing airport. And when you see the duty-free, when you guys are going home for vacation or you're uh, going home for a break, you'll get to see the extent of the duty-free, and it's incredible. But anyways, Incheon, really nice place. Don't worry, the signs are in English as well as Korean, so you will always be able to find your way around, okay? And I believe a lot of their staff is trained 
uh, to be able to speak English to help you, okay? So this should be your procedure uh, once you come to Korea, okay? After you get off the plane, <laughs> first, arrive. Um, and pat yourself on the back because you did a good job. It's been a long, hard, arduous process. So pat yourself on the back and be like, good job. Good job, Brandon. Good job, Ariel. Good job, just uh, not Jesse Kim. She's right next to me. Bree, good job, okay? <laughs> then you're gonna head to immigration, just follow the crowd, everyone's going the same way, and there'll be a line for foreigners and the line for Koreans and things like that. After that is all done, go to the baggage claim and get your bags. If there's any problems, um, make sure you know there'll be a, a, an information desk at the baggage in case one of your bags gets lost, okay? We'll talk, I think we'll talk about it more in a little bit later. Uh, next is after you come out, um, of the gate, look for your name, and I have some more notes about this. Um, there should be a driver holding a sign with your name. Um, when you get to the driver, um, just check their name. Their name should always be James. That's the company we have it. Uh, we're contracted with to pick you up. By the way, pick up is for free. Don't you're not gonna at any point have to pay anyone, so don't give any money. Um, uh, James, yes, will be his name, so just check their name. Also check to see that they have a photo of you. The reason we're saying this is because in the past we've had people that come out and uh, someone approaches them uh, and says like, oh, you, where are you going? And you say, oh, are you, are you uh, Corvier? And they'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the, they'll say, where are you going? And you're going, oh, I'm going to Boondong. And they'll be like, all right, let's go. It's going to be 100,000. They'll do it like that. All of this is already set up for you. We're going to you know, you guys won't have to deal with that headache. Um, the call van service is called Angel Call, Angel Call Van. Um, the driver's name should be James, will be James, so make sure to ask them that. And they will also have your photo because they're looking for you. So make sure that they have your photo already and that's the right person. And it should look on the right where it says arrive at the apartment, that's what the van should look like, okay? If you have any questions, you can always call your recruiter when you arrive at the airport in case you have any questions, okay? Also remember, tipping is not uh, a part of Korean culture, so do not worry, you will not have to have cash to tip. Okay, so uh, you'll arrive at your apartment and then your co-teacher will probably be there to help you get a run of things and a layout of your town and where to go for things and uh, spend the weekend getting settled into your new accommodation, getting everything right and really making it your own. That's really one of the fun parts. People hate this part of settling into a new place, but I always think it's great. I love cleaning for a week solid because it's just, I don't know, I just get the place to be how I want it. All right, if you miss your flight or it's delayed, uh, make sure to inform your recruiter, send them a Facebook message or you can call them, uh, tell them, inform them of the situation and also uh, you know, what's going on when you expect to arrive and things like that. And they'll inform the school and they'll inform the driver to reschedule for that, okay? If you have a missing bag, uh, file a report with baggage service. And what you can do is make sure before you leave to have written down and close to you, maybe in your wallet, your school's address or your accommodations address. That way, when baggage service is going to resend your bag to that place, uh, they forward it to the right address. So you can give them this address and say, okay, this is where I'll be staying, and then they will forward it correctly, okay? Very important. So make sure to write that down, address, get your accommodations address just in case. Okay, um, also important reminders about arriving is to bring your original TEFL certificate. Your school will need to verify that. Uh, they'll just make a photocopy of it and then they'll give it right back. Um, also make sure to bring some extra passport photos. If you were here with us from the beginning, we recommended e-passport photo because it's a lot cheaper than taking two new passport photos every time. The reason why is because when you apply for your ARC card, oh, I wish I had an ARC card on me, I could show you guys what it looks like. Um, they're gonna not take your photo there, but they're gonna take the photo that you give them and that's uh, the photo that they're going to pretty much attach to the ID digitally somehow, through Korean magic or something like that. Um, also for your medical checkup, they're gonna require these photos. So it's best to bring uh, about four because throughout your time here, you never know when you're gonna need them, honestly. I think even if they want to renew at their school, they have to have more, right? Yeah, so just bring a lot. I, brought, I think I brought like 10, um, and I am almost down to my last, so definitely bring some. Um, also, do not take any medication. You know, are flying and you're feeling a little bit sick, please do not take any medication because in doing so, it can affect the results in your checkup. Acid, that could mean not getting the job, okay? So just try to stick it out for a little bit. Don't use the Tylenol, don't use Advil, don't use whatever painkiller 
just try to refrain from that, okay? Uh, also, your first payday will be about one month after arriving, so make sure you bring enough money to last your first month. Um, also, you, you might think, wait, am I supposed to get a settlement allowance? You will, but that's not going to be paid out until you have a bank account, which you can't get a bank account until you have an ARC card, and you can't get an ARC card until you do the medical checkup. See, it all affects on this certain level. So it's going to be about a month after until you can get paid, okay? So we recommend bringing about a thousand US dollars in Korean. You can say Bekman won or one million won. Um, sure, you can bring a little bit less. You can bring more. Um, but generally, $1,000 pretty much tends to be what most people uh, are comfortable with. It allows you not to have to be too frugal your first month. Going on about the medical checkup, um, yeah, you're going to take that the first few days in Korea once you arrive. It's going to be a full medical checkup at a hospital, and your co-teacher will help you with that. She'll let you know, you know where to go and things like that. Um, the results are going to take about one to two weeks after taking the exam. They're going to be delivered in an envelope. Do not open that for any reason um, because that has to be sealed when you give it to immigration. You'll have to pay for this medical checkup yourself. Um, sorry to inform you that. Um, they're a little bit expensive, about 150,000 Korean won, which is about 70 to 150 dollars. I will say that probably most of your guys' medical checkups will be around 100 to 120 dollars. So just to be safe, recommend bringing 150,000. Um, Sarah, do are they able to use the card or it must be cash for the medical checkup? Yes. Cash, it's gotta be cash. So make sure you have that on you, okay? And also about your ARC registration. After receiving your medical checkup results, you're gonna visit the, visit the immigration center and apply for your ARC card. Once you do apply, it's gonna take about three to five weeks because it's March and this is when most teachers come to receive the actual card. So um, make sure, Highly recommend uh, when you apply for the card to opt that you want it delivered via delivery service. Um, it's not like back home, delivery here is really, really uh, cheap and it's all really, really fast, okay? It's like, yeah, $3, $2 or something like that. It makes it so you don't have to excuse yourself from school and go all the way to immigration office to pick it up, okay? It'll just arrive uh, at you. It'll take like one more day or two more days. So it's, it's highly recommendable, okay? Total cost for ARC registration, which also must be in cash, is 30,000 Korean won, or about $30, plus delivery, like we said, about 3,000 won. Hmm. I'm losing my voice. All right, and uh, after you arrive, also we want to let you know about the Korea Spring 2015 party. You are invited. Um, we hold these parties a couple times a year, and they're always a lot of fun. It allows you to uh, finally meet your recruiter in person. Um, might bring a gift for them if you know what I'm saying um, and it's a great way to meet other teachers sometimes you'll meet teachers in your area your same city um, and you'll meet people from different programs and teachers that have been here for uh, a year or two or ten um, so it's a great way to meet a lot of new people your recruiter when cool stuff um, and we're gonna give you a lot more details about that coming up uh, we have it settled on a venue location yet but we will and we'll let you know all those details okay but just from now, just know that you are invited. And also, new teachers, you guys are going to get a free drink voucher. I mean, what, why not come? You're going to get a free, free drink on us. Okay? And that will be somewhere in Seoul, just to let you know. Okay, so that's pretty much the end of this webinar. I don't know what time we're clocking in at. I'm sure it's been about... 45 minutes or 30 minutes. Um, last things, very important. We need your help. Um, you know, we are free to you guys. Um, and we love uh, the look, you know, we love helping you guys come to, to Korea and seeing, you know, the look on your children's face when they get a new teacher. It's always a lot of fun. But we need your help. Um, we request, please leave us a Facebook testimonial. Really important. Um, go over to our Facebook fan page, Corvia Consulting, and leave a testimonial or a review. Um, it really helps us out and it lets uh, us spread our credibility and our reputation among other teachers. Really important. Um, also, be active on the Corvia Facebook group, whether it's Corvia Epic or Corvia Gepic. Um, you know, if there's new teachers that want to know, you know, how do you apply for this document or what about this? You know, you're going to soon be a, an expert very, very soon. So stay active on that group and help out. Um, also, become a Corvia.com contributor. We will let you guys know about that on the future, uh, in the future via our Facebook fan page. We're kind of going to be developing a contributor program for writers or English majors that want to, you know, kind of build up their resume, their writing resume in South Korea. Um, and we're going to publish work for them. 
And also very importantly, spread the word about Corvia to your friends. If you have a cousin or you have some friends that are, you know, like, oh, you're going to create, you know, that sounds pretty cool. I want to do that too. What, where should I start? Just tell them Corvia, Corvia.com. Okay. Really helps us out. And finally, remember, we're here for you. Once you arrive, that does not mean you are never going to see us um, if you want to. Um, we're always here for you. We can answer any questions via our Facebook groups, admin email, talking to your recruiter. Think of us as tech support. If you ever have a problem or a big issue, let us know and we can try to see if we can uh, work with it or solve it or fix it, okay?